morning you guys it's Karen and I am doing a video that I've wanted to do for so long and I don't know why I haven't prioritized this video I, I jotted down ideas um, and it's for aging eyes as the title will suggest I'm hoping to do the title aging eyes crepey eyes hooded eyes um, I don't know whether I'll include watery eyes in the title but it's for that as well I'll briefly mention the wrinkle injections and the kind of um, not surgical but the more intense options that there are at the end of the video but this isn't talking about that this is talking more about makeup things and skincare that type of thing and I love eyeshadow I fall in I've fallen in love with eyeshadow over the last two to three years just since doing YouTube um, and I have tried to fall in love with brighter lipsticks and it just hasn't happened for me very occasionally I like to wear a red lip um, but I have to then tone down my eyeshadow I feel otherwise I feel it looks too much um, and with my eyes getting older, you know that I had the Botox disaster, which meant that they were more hooded, but I, they've also got very crepey. And so even like my lid, when I'm putting eyeshadow on, I can, you know, I'm pulling the skin with it as opposed to it just smoothing over the lid. The, the skin is moving. It's very, very loose on my eyelids and it's also loose here and it's got that sort of crepey appearance. So they are aging, they are hooded. They are crepey and I also have a big problem with watery eyes. Um, <clears throat> so there's a few things that I want to tell you about all of these things that might help and these are my essentials for aging okay. eyes. I'm going to start with talking about watering eyes um, and the first thing that I know it may seem obvious but it's eye drops and I've been using the Sustain Hydration or the Blink Intensive Tears Plus. Both of these are really, really good, but you have to remember to use them quite a few times a day. And when I do that, it does seem to, after a few days, my eyes stop watering. And it's just something that when my eyes are not watering, I don't remember to use them. They start watering, I build them up by using them a few times a day, and they stop watering. So if you have problems with watery eyes, then get, you, you get your eye drops out. And if you don't, Get the ones in the little vials if you don't want to buy a bottle because they don't last very long, unfortunately. And I, ha I am going to go forward buy the ones that you can just twist the tops off and use those. I have got some of those as well. And then you can keep some on you. And it just really makes a difference. And when I get watery eyes, it's not just that it waters out of this side. It waters and it takes all my makeup off, like from the inner part, from the outer part. And my makeup looks terrible. Um, so I'm really going to make an effort to try and use my eye drops more than I used to. Um, blinking more in general helps and the optician was telling me if you're looking at a screen even just to look away and blink a few times and look back again that will help things um, but something I discovered myself I'm definitely allergic to a few things and they're mostly things with glitter in I can't put near my eyes but there are certain things that I'm allergic to and certain brands and I know that other people are so I'm going to tell you what they are just in case you're using them and this might be the thing that's making your eyes water because what you've got to think of is what you're putting on your eyes, but also what's going on internally, you know, so watery eyes is something because you might have dry eye syndrome, which is what I've got. Um, but it also might be what you're putting on your eyelids. The chances are, if you've got one, you've probably got some sensitivity in your skin, the skin of your eyes. So Urban Decay Eye Primer, if you're using that, try to miss that out and see what happens see if that improves things because certainly i'm allergic to the urban decay primer it's a different feeling i get that don't get watery eyes if i put the urban decay primer on my eyes my eyes sting and i just i remember it happened a few times when i was working in the hospital and i just had to take my makeup off with wipes that i had in my bag i just had to take my eye makeup off and as soon as it was off my eyes felt better um and thankfully i had a mascara on me i remember i put a little bit of concealer on my eyes mascara and that was me for the day um but try that. The other one is the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks. I've been using the black matte one with no problem as an eyeliner, but when I use any of the other ones with any kind of shimmer in, it, it again stings my eyes. And when I mentioned that to, um, I've mentioned it twice actually in shops, in the Laura Mercier shops, when they said about the caviar sticks. And I said, I love them, but I'm allergic to them. And both shopkeepers actually said to me, so am I. So that's clearly, there's something in there. I did try and isolate the ingredient that was making my eyes irritated and I haven't yet managed to do it. So um, I'm not sure what it is, but the Laura Mercier Caviar Sticks Urban Decay Primer Potions. The other thing to consider is, could it be something you put on the night before? And I think this is something that a lot of people miss. So for me, I'd wake up with watery eyes and I suddenly thought, well, what am I doing the night before? Let me have a look. 
and I know that there are certain things that make my eyes water. If I use a self tanner with um, any kind of perfume or alcohol in it, or sometimes even ones that haven't, because a lot of the ones I use don't have perfume and alcohol in them, um, but there's certain self tans that make my eyes water the following morning. If I use um, too much retinol, I am gonna talk about retinol. If I use too much retinol too near my eyes, my eyes will water the following day. Um, and just generally my skincare, because there is, for example, the Clarins Lotus Oil that I absolutely love, makes my skin feel wonderful the following day, but it makes my eyes water. So have a look at the skincare that you're using the night before and make sure there's no fragrance and no alcohol and maybe try something purer if you can and see if it makes it. This is gonna be quite a long video and I maybe could have done it, you know, split it, but I thought it was worthwhile having it all in one video. So I will try to be succinct if I can. Um, so that was eye drops and that was watery eyes and the things that you can avoid. The next thing is skincare and kind of tools. So um, the first thing I would say is this is a good thing to, I wouldn't say invest in because it's not expensive, but this is a micro needle um, roller, derma roller. Um, and this one is 0 0.5. And this is the one that I use. I've got a, a, a one inch micro needle that I haven't used yet. I only used this, I started off with this one all over my face, but I will be using this one around my eyes. Um, and this is good for using around this area where you've got crow's feet and just under your eyebrow, I would say if you could do this under your eyebrow, Nisha, my friend Nisha has done a great video um, demoing microneedling, explaining microneedling, and she's, I don't need to say any more than that, I'll, I'll link Nisha's video for you below because it's absolutely brilliant and it tells you all you need to know. But this is a great tool that will, it won't happen like overnight, but if you do it once a week, say up here with this, this is what I'm gonna do, then it, it should tighten the area. I mean, saying that this is only 0.5, so it should, even if it doesn't tighten, this one will tighten slightly, but it will take longer than if you were using, say, a one millimeter as opposed to a 0.5. It will still help with absorption of any products you use up here, and I'll talk about that in a moment. Um, so on to skincare. You would think that the first thing I would say is an eye cream, but I don't necessarily think you need an eye cream. The eye cream that I love is the Bobbi Brown Extra Eye Cream, which is uber expensive. I think it's 45 pound for a jar that looks big, but there's actually not that much product in, although to be fair, it does last a long time. I did a dupe video of the Bobbi Brown Extra Cream, and this was one of the dupes. Um, and when I say dupe, it wasn't, it didn't look like it's in the same packaging or anything like that, but I looked at the ingredients and there were specific ingredients. There was shea butter and I think glycerin and that's what I was looking for and I really did a big research into that and I found this and another, I think it was a nipple cream from Maman Bebe or something like that. But this, um, I think everybody can get it, is the Nivea Daily Essentials Rich Regenerating Night Cream. And this has the same ingredients as the Bobbi Brown Extra Eye Cream, but it doesn't have perfume and alcohol in it. And I think that's really important. You can see it's nice and thick as well. And you could, of course, use this all over your face, not just on your eyes. I think it's really, really important, though, that you don't use something with alcohol and fragrance. You would be surprised how many eye creams have alcohol and fragrance. And alcohol is drying, fragrance is irritating. Fragrance can further desensitize your eyes. So if you put something with fragrance on your eyes, even if you just put it under here, it will migrate to your lid. Um, and as the years go by, it, it can sensitize your skin, meaning that you could eventually be allergic to mascara, you could eventually be allergic to your eyeliner if it's got the same ingredients. That's the kind of thing that can happen. So I'd really recommend having a look at any eye creams, but you don't necessarily need to use an eye cream. Something like this is great, but it, it really gives you a way of hydrating that area if you've got like real um, dryness. But what you can do, and what I would say is an essential in any skincare regime and for aging eyes is retinol. This is Ardermic R, now for eyes, Ardermic R for eyes. So it's by La Roche-Posay and La Roche-Posay do a, um, a retinol cream for the face. As far as I know, this is the only one that is specifically for eyes. And I guess that is because it's a lower, percentage but it's still got retinol in it. I have tried putting retinol near my eyes. I do, I have got a couple of questions from people asking if you can put retinoid cream or retinol cream near your eyes. And it's not really a question of should you or shouldn't you. The, the problem is that most people will have a bad reaction to that in that your eyes will just water or be sore or be itchy. It just, not itchy, but most people won't tolerate retinol by their eyes or retinoid cream, so Retin-A type cream. 
And personally for me, even when I use this Aerodermic R, it's one of the things where my eyes water a little bit in the morning. Um, and so when I put it on, I know that that's gonna happen. And I'll generally do it on a day where I'm not going to be filming or I don't need to be wearing makeup because I know that that will happen. If you don't want to buy the Ardermic R for eyes because it is quite expensive and you do have a Retin-A retin -A cream or a Retinol cream, um, then what I would suggest is just make sure you, you put it up to here, but don't, like at the top of your cheekbones and don't put it under your eyes because it will migrate and then put it up here and maybe, maybe just under your eyebrows and see how you get on. Um, and it will migrate to your eye area. That's what I'm doing. I never actually put it on my eyelids. I just put it under my brow here and then kind of under here. And it does make my eyes water a little bit with this one. Um, so you'd need to be extra careful if you're using the Retinol and even more careful if you're using Retin-A, I would say, you know, stay as far away as you can from your eyes. But if you're putting it here, it will migrate to your eyes. Um, and the, again, use this afterwards, make sure you really hydrate the area afterwards so that um, you're not drying it out because that wouldn't look nice. Um, oh, I've got another thing here I forgot to show you. This is the Hydroluron Moisture Jelly. I don't know whether you guys have got this in the USA. It's by Indeed Labs and this is the jelly. It's got that little pot where you push it up. I use this as a night cream. You can see I'm nearly out of it. Um, it's one of my favorite things to use. And this is also a great thing to use as an under eye cream um, because it really is just Hydroluron. That's all it is. And you can even use the Hydroluron Serum in a bottle, in a tube, sorry. You can use that underneath and then put this on top and you're getting like a double whammy. And I... I don't always use an eye cream or I don't always use these or you know under my eyes but if I use my Ardermic R then for that day and, and the following day I make sure I use something like this underneath to really okay, that's skincare onto makeup and this is another area where I get a lot of questions so I'll start with um, eye, eye stuff and then I will talk about brushes um, but I, I have mentioned in passing in many videos that I consider my Too Faced matte shadows and my Illamasqua shadows to be anti-aging. They are not created as anti-aging shadows. It's just when I use them, I feel like there is a smoothing effect and it, it makes my eyes look different to if I put something shimmery on or any other matte. They're just such a soft and creamy matte. Um, and quite often people will ask me which palette I mean, and I don't mean a specific palette with the Too Faced ones. With the Illamasqua, I'm talking about the singles, and every single matte eyeshadow that I've got from Illamasqua, that's the cream one, um, this is a peach one, the first one I got was a beautiful mauve one. In fact, I think I might have done an anti-aging eyeshadow look or something with this one maybe, I don't know, but they're just so soft and creamy and powdery, and. I know that there are shadows that can be like that, but with these ones, when I put it on my eye, there's just something about it, it seems to smooth out. It doesn't seem to make my eyes look as, as crepey, but I know that these Illamasqua singles are very expensive, um, and I don't believe they have a palette with all the mattes in it. I might be wrong on that. I'll have a look and see if I can link something below for you, and if I don't link a palette, then I'll link to the singles. Um, so that's the Illamasqua ones, but if you don't want to spend the money on those, when I talk about the Too Faced, these are the two palettes that I've got, or the two palettes I'm thinking of. So the first one is, this is the Too Faced Natural Eye, but it's in the very old cardboard packaging, as you can see. Um, and there is actually only three mattes in this palette, so it's not a palette that I would necessarily recommend buying, because only a third of it is matte. But this cream eyeshadow here, which is called Heaven, really is heavenly. It is just, you put it on and it just... Like I said, it's just so smoothing. It just feels like a smoothing eyeshadow. And I did, by the way, try the um, Tarte Smoothing, I think it was called Smoothing Eye Primer, and I didn't find it to do anything more than any other primer. And the next Too Faced palette I have is this one, and this is the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palette. And again, even though this has got shimmers in it, I, I do find this a great, I hesitate to call it anti-aging, because you might expect dramatic results. You might put it on and think, oh, my eyes don't look any younger. But because I wear a lot of shimmery shadows, I can definitely tell the difference between ones that make my eyes look older and ones that don't. And for example, the Makeup Geek Foiled, the Makeup Geek Duochrome, whenever I put them on, it seems to draw attention to the wrinkles and the crepiness on my eyelids. When I use this, including the shimmers, it doesn't do that. Um, but it's the mattes that I really recommend. Um, so I would recommend maybe buying the Too Faced Natural Matte Palette. I don't have it. It's one that I'm very tempted to get. But I don't, I certainly have got enough matte palettes, if you know what I mean. I've got the Tarte Tartlet palette, which is lovely. It's a really beautiful palette, really beautiful matte shadows. 
they just haven't got that same creaminess as the Too Faced ones. I've got the Kat Von D uh, Not Monarch Shade and Light Palette. In fact, that's what I've used today for this eye look. And it's lovely and it's they're very soft and creamy and they're very close to the Too Faced ones, but they've just not got that same magic. Actually, I would say Illamasqua is my top choice for that sort of real, I put it on and just go, oh my goodness, it looks so different, you know? Um, and I just wanted to also show you this MAC Warm Neutrals. This is um, the 15 colours that you buy as a pre-made palette. And every time I've used this, I've got compliments from you guys. And there is, you know, shiny shades, but there's no glitter in here. As far as I know, that one there looks like it might have a tiny bit of glitter in, but it's not a glitter fest. It is really a nice soft shimmer. And whenever I've worn them, I've got compliments from you guys. And so I think this is another good choice if you do want a little bit of shimmer in your life. Um, so I'll link all of those for you, don't worry about that. So on to, actually I started in the wrong order, <laughs> I should have been talking about eye primers first. And the first thing I would say is that this Too Faced Shadow Insurance Glitter Glue is a really good thing to have if you've got hooded eyes. Um, because that, talking about those eyeshadows, I was thinking more of the crepiness. Um, but if you've got hooded eyes, this is a really good thing to have because you can put it on, put your eyeshadow on and then it's going to hold it there. It's not going to transfer to your crease because that's the problem that we have when we've got hooded eyes is whatever you put on your lid transfers as soon as you open your eyes to your crease and even throughout the day it can transfer. And this is one that it just, you don't have to use it with glitter and I don't find that my eyes get sensitive with it, but it does just hold things on. I don't use it very much simply because I tend to use a cream pigment underneath my eyeshadow. I'm using at the moment a lot um, for my eye base is the NYX um, eyeshadow pencil, cream eyeshadow pencil in milk. This is not it, this is the Sephora one in snow I think. Um, and this is good as well, but actually I would say the NYX one is as good as this one um, and that's what I've used today underneath this color and it's another one that it's very sort of tacky and it keeps your eyeshadow on so it's great what I do is I load up my eyeshadow brush and I have that sort of either in my hand or, or resting somewhere ready to go I'll put the um, eyeshadow pencil on and then quickly powder over it and I can instantly open my eye and there's no color transfer into my crease. So I think that's a really good one to use as well. And I have to mention the Illamasqua Cream Pigments because they hold your eyeshadow on all day. They've got beautiful colors. Um, and even you don't have to buy all of the cream pigments. You could just buy the lightest one and use that for all of your shadows. Um, but if you, again, if you don't want to pay the money of Illamasqua, the Nabla Cosmetics Cream shadows are really good and do a great job of keeping eyeshadow on. Okay, I'll talk about brushes just now um, because that would make sense to do it in that kind of order, wouldn't it? And then I'll talk about uh, mascara and eyeliner. So I've picked up some of the brushes that I would say are essential for us with hooded aging. Um, I suppose this is for hooded eyes I'm really talking about. Yeah, hooded eyes. Um, so firstly, and probably the big, biggest brush that we need or the most important brush that we need is a crease brush. And it used to be very, very difficult to find a crease brush that was thin. You always got crease brushes that were very thick. Um, I can't think of any now, but these um, are ones that I've been using for a while and they are my favorites. The first one that I bought was this and this is the Louise Young LY38B and it's just the perfect size because if you've got hooded eyes, um, you, you often also don't have much space there. So this is not just for hooded eyes, but if you haven't got much space there, you want a thin crease brush. This is super, super soft. I'm just perfect for getting into that crease area. Um, so I love that one. Another one is the MAC 221. This is fairly recent and it's a little bit thicker than if you don't want something quite as thin as the Louise Young. And then even thinner still, this is the Cosette S185. And I have been using this for years actually. I bought this at IMATS probably three years ago maybe and I love it and I don't actually I don't use this for the crease very often this would be if you've got a tiny space or really small amount of crease this would be a great one but I use this sometimes to dip into color and just add like say I want to add a little bit of red in this I just use this little brush to add in the corner but they are three thin crease brushes that I would recommend and then just two other brushes here one is the 237 by Zoeva um, and it's just, it's called a detail shader. It's just a flat little brush. But the reason I like this is again, if you've not got much space, I know that I have got quite a lot of space, but when you've got a hooded eye, I want a brush that's not going to, if I put it on here, it's not gonna get into my crease because otherwise you're just gonna go over your crease color. I want it to just go over my lid. And I don't have a huge lid area 
um, when my eyes are hooded. I say when they are because I had the Botox that made them more hooded, then I have Botox that makes them less hooded and all of that kind of thing. And this brush is just perfect and it's perfect for cream eyeshadow, powder eyeshadow, and it's just the perfect size to just make sure you get that bit of color on your lid and you can make a sort of multicolored look regardless of how much room you've got. The final brush is this, it's another Louise Young one. This is, oh, do you know what? I can't see the number, it's worn off. I've had it for that long. But the reason I'm showing you this is it is the thinnest eyeliner brush I've ever come across. And I think, I didn't use this this morning, I used a thicker one, but when, again, when you've got hooded eyes, do you remember I talk about the makeup transfer into the crease? So the thinner line you can put there, firstly, the more wide open your eyes will look. And I know you guys might be like, what are you talking about? You're wearing black liner in your waterline. I go against the grain, I know I do. I don't aim to have bigger looking eyes. I aim to have striking eyes. And I know that a lot of you prefer me with a softer look and I do wear that a lot of the time. It just happens today, I did think to myself this morning, you should have done the softer look to show how, how much more open your eyes can be and used this brush and done a thinner line. I've actually done a thick line this morning. But this gives you the ability to do a really thin line so that again, you're not, it's like you're doing everything in a smaller way because you've got that hooded eye, but you can still put eyeliner on, but it, it's not as likely then to go onto your crease and it just looks more natural and it's a beautiful, beautiful brush and I've had it for years. I've probably had this before I even started YouTube. I know I did actually. So I've probably had this about four or five years and I wash it a lot and it's absolutely fine. Um, I will list it for you because I know I didn't tell you the number because it's rubbed Finally, off. Some eyeliner and mascaras to talk about. I've only got three products here um, and I think it's more about the formula that you use on your eyes for eyeliner. If you're using a top line, and I would say that a felt tip is the best to use if you have hooded eyes because it's super fast drying. You almost don't need to wait for it to dry, but I'd still recommend like closing your eyes, you know, putting it on and then just waiting just a couple of seconds and then opening your eyes. And this is one that I, again, I've been using this for years. It's the Maybelline Master Precise Liquid Eyeliner. That's the brush. Well, it's a felt tip, which I don't usually like, but I like this one. Super intense line, and this is an old one. This is not a new one. I've had this for quite some time and I use it a lot. I use it in here. What I use it for, in fact, I used it this morning in that corner, is when my eyes are watering, I've done my makeup in the living room, I come through here and it's disappeared from the inner part, I'll go in and, and redo it with this. And I did use a felt a lot more after getting the, when the Botox went wrong and my eyes were super hooded, I did use um, my felt pen. I just found that to be much, much easier and less transfer. Otherwise, using my gel eyeliners that I like to use or liquid eyeliners, I had to sort of sit there for quite a while like that until it had dried. Yeah. To use pencils, this one is a good one. It's the L'Oreal Superliner Gel Matic. This is actually one that I keep because it's the best drugstore pencil I found for using the waterline. But I, to be honest, I don't generally use pencils in the waterline. I haven't yet found one that's um, that will stay. The best one I found is the Lancome Liquid Eyeliner, Liquid Pencil that we don't have in the UK. Um, anyway, I'm not talking about putting things in waterline, but this, if you like to use a pencil on the top, I think would be pretty good because it is, it's a gel, but it dries very quickly. Um, and then finally a mascara, this is the MAC Extended Play Lash. This is not a waterproof mascara. It doesn't claim to be waterproof, but I find it to be waterproof. I've worn this for, again, for years and years. I wore this on my wedding day. Um, it just feels, it does make your eyelashes feel a bit crispy. But again, when you're putting eye, mascara on, one of the problems is when I put mascara on, my the tops would touch the crease when my eyes were a lot more hooded and then it would ruin my makeup because I'd done my makeup, I put my mascara on and I'd end up trying to get it off with a, a cotton bud and it would actually take the makeup off. So this is a very fast drying one um, and I just found this to be much better. I could put it on, again, wait just a minute or so, open my eyes but try not to open them too wide and it would dry very, very quickly and it wouldn't transfer. That was the biggest thing. I would suggest if you don't want to buy the MAC one, then buy a waterproof drugstore one if you're looking for a drugstore one. Um, I There's not really any drugstore mascaras that I love as much as my high-end ones. It's one of the areas I haven't yet found a love, um, but I would suggest going for a waterproof one because then there's less chance of it transferring um, to your eyes. I remember actually that that's the way I would tell when my hormone imbalance was at its worst. Um, so I've got polycystic ovary syndrome and I'm on um, drugs for it, but the drugs you only take for the 10 days of each month, of each calendar month, um, and then you have to have a break from them now and then and take some time off. And I would always be able to tell when my hormone imbalance was 
really out of balance and I'd say it to Kev and I think he would maybe not believe me I'd say that I felt like my hair was really greasy but my my mascara no matter what I did would start to transfer onto my crease by the end of the day they'd be or not even by the end of the day probably by lunchtime I'd have mascara dots up there and I'd have to switch to using waterproof mascara and that was then not quite as bad it still didn't prevent it because this oil was the problem you know but um yeah, random little comment there. Um, that's everything that I've got to show you. But like I said, I'll briefly talk about the other kind of options. There are many, many options that you can have for crepey eyes, hooded eyes, that kind of thing. Obviously, the biggest one is blepharoplasty, and that's something that I was considering having done. Um, I, In fact, I was going to have it done in August last year. I had almost booked it. I had provisionally booked the date. Um, the reason I didn't go for it was because firstly it was very very expensive it was about £2,000 over £2,000 um, it was also very difficult because Kev was starting a new job at the time um, and we couldn't figure out how we could get a day off to take me because it wasn't where I live it was you know a couple of hours away the biggest thing for me was the scarring um, I've just realized I might be looking at the viewfinder a lot there I don't know why I get out of the habit I did that for years looked not for years for about the first year I looked at the viewfinder and people used to comment on it and so I sort of trained myself to look into the camera um, but sometimes I get distracted because I am right there and I do need to be there so I can see if everything's okay and that I'm centered and that kind of thing um, and the final reason that I didn't have it done was because I was worried about scarring because I do I don't know whether it's a side effect of the Ehlers Danlos or not but I bruise easily and I scar very easily um, like I've got a scar on my shoulder just from having um, what, like a skin tag and I removed it with a freezing spray and there's a big white mark on my shoulder um, and I remember I was devastated because I was wearing an off-the-shoulder wedding dress and yada yada um, so I was really worried about the scar and I thought if I have blepharoplasty done and end up with a big scar in the middle then that will defeat the purpose for me really um, so I didn't have it done and I'm really glad I did it because I'm now going the other route as you guys know I'm going to have Plexa Plexa is a fairly new to the UK treatment there. It does go on in the USA. I've done a whole video talking about this, so I'll link that for you as well so that you can watch that if you're interested. But basically they're all combinations of kind of laser, IPL. It's all the same um, sort of technology in that the idea, it's almost like a more intense version of microneedling. It's all about getting the collagen to, to produce itself again from causing little injuries to your eyes. That's the idea, which sounds quite horrific, but it works. That is something that definitely works. And like I said, there's all different ways of having it done from, from intense laser treatment, which will result in, you know, two weeks where you're looking awful, or you can have this plexa, which is maybe not as um, intense as the laser. But I'm, I'm not going to talk through all of those treatments, but there are those treatments available if that's what you want and the final thing is the Botox that I have talked about many many times on my channel I've got a before and after video I've got two before and after videos actually I've talked about it going wrong so I've got that video I'll try and remember and link all of these below but there's, there's a lot of things to link so you might have to scroll quite a bit through my description to find these things but I will link them for you um, but in order to have that done certainly in the UK you need to find somebody that knows how to do a brow lift and you need to ask if the person doing your treatment is advanced, if they have done the advanced training, because it's only on the advanced training that you they teach you how to do the brow lift. There isn't a specific area that I can tell you that they do it, because I've had it done in all different places and it works in all different places. It's just up to the um, practitioner that you go to as to how they do it. I had it done two weeks ago, um, but I'm still gonna have a little bit more put in the outside here. Um, but like I said, I'll link to those videos talking about it, but that is another option. The thing that I don't have an option for, or I don't have a solution for, and I hope that one day there it is, is the actual part of the lid here where, where that is crepey um, and pulling skin upwards wouldn't really do anything. It's almost like I would need, you know how blepharoplasty cuts the crease so that you've not got as much loose skin horizontally, but I've still got too much skin this way. I feel like I could do with a little cut there and sort of pulling my, you know, like an eye lift kind of thing, but outwards. Um, and I I don't know that there's anything ever gonna come out for that because the, the eyelid skin there is so sensitive um, that it, it would be hard to put any cream on or do any treatment. You know, I am gonna ask when I get my Plexa treatment 
if there is anything can be done, I'm going to ask Dr. Wong if there's anything can be done for that eyelid crepiness. Um, I, the only thing I can rely on at the moment is when I put my Ardermic R retinol up here, hope that it migrates enough and helps my eyelids a little bit. So, um, yeah, so I hope that that was useful for you. I hope that was interesting. I've got one other video like this that I'm doing, which is essentials for oily skin um, and I think I might try and do an essentials for dry skin as well because I have had dry skin when my medication has kicked in my skin got very dry um, although I may not have as many products to show um, but yeah I hope this was interesting for you I will tell you what I've got on my face I have got on Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation in Ecru which I think is possibly a tad like for me, I'm not sure. I shall see when I watch this back if it matches my neck or not. <laughs> um, on my eyes, I've got the Kat Von D Shade and Light Palette. Um, that's my little Watson shuffling down, I think. On my cheeks, I've got the Becca Blush in Tiger Lily. And then on my lips, I have got the Buxom Lip Foundation in Nude. And that's everything. Thank you very much for watching and I'll speak to you soon. Hey, sausage. <laughs>